This is a probe lens, which is commonly used for food and beverage shots like this. In this video, you'll learn how to make shots just like these inside a blender for free. Some of the magic of these shots is just coming up with cool little small spaces for the camera lens to go through. There are also some key tweaks to your blender settings to help dial in the effect as well, and we'll get to those later in this video. And the most significant thing about this style of shot is how long and narrow the lens is. This allows us to get inside the necks of bottles in between little tiny pieces of food and also getting a really, really low camera angle from being so close to the surface. So I've set up this shot that might look like some kind of an ad for a delivery app like Postmates or something. And this is where we're gonna start teaching you how to create this effect inside of Blender. Firstly, the way that we animate our camera movement is done with a Bezier curve or a Bezier curve. I'm not up to date on my French. So to make our Bezier curve, we're going to add curve Bezier. And then this is landing kind of inside the table. So I'm doing G for grab and then Z to raise it up. And we can see that it's really small right here. So I'm going to press S, scale it up a little bit, R to rotate it, R to rotate it, press Z for the Z axis, 90. And then this moves just like any other object. So press Z over here for this overhead view. And I'm going to drag it so it ends up closer to our starting point. I'm even going to rotate it one more time from this view, 180 degrees, so that our starting point is where we want things to start. We want our camera to start inside this bag. So I'm pressing G, I'm grabbing our curve, bring it over toward this bag from this overhead view, just by pressing Z up here. I'm going to press R and rotate it until this other side is originating up here in the bag. And then maybe this is a little bit high, but you can, you can tweak all this later. What we want here is just our main course of camera movement. So we can press tab to get back into edit mode. And then if you know how these curves work, you can click on the middle of the arms and just grab it, drag it around wherever you want it to go, just like any other object. And then if you grab the ends of the handles, you can press scale to bring it down and make it smaller. And you can press R to rotate the handles as well. So I think that's a good size. Pressing G, grabbing this, rotating it. It's getting bright in here. Then it starts us off with two points. You can take one of these points, click on it, and do E for extrude. And then that'll bring us our next point, just like extruding points in any other mesh. So we're going to extrude it to about here, R to rotate a little bit, extrude it up around here, because I think going up through the fries looks pretty cool. And then extrude again out to about here is where we're going to end. And you want to avoid really harsh points like this, harsh turns. So this, I would probably grab the handles and scale those out a little bit and rotate our middle because we want kind of the widest, most gradual turn is going to feel like something that's real that like an actual camera could really do. And then that one's pretty good. So now I'm going to lose our overhead angle and start looking at how high up each of these should be. And you can change all this later. So this doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but I'm going to G for grab on here, press Z, bring it down closer to our table. Same here, G for grab, move it down, but keep it kind of up in the fries. Same here, G for grab, move it down. And we want this pretty close to the table. I think that makes it look cool. And that's one of the hallmarks of this style of lens and of this style of shot. And this one again, we can bring it down into the fries a little bit more. And our end point, which is up way too high, grab that and bring that down as well. So I'm pressing tab to get out of edit mode. And so right now we have a rough little path for our camera, which I think is gonna look pretty cool. So once we feel good about our path that our camera is going to follow, now we're going to add an empty plane axis. So that starts off in the middle. And again, it's kind of like in our table. So I'm grabbing it, dragging it up, dragging it over here, get it rotated. 
So then we're going to add a constraint to this empty to make it follow the curve. We're going to add object constraint, follow path. And follow path sounds a lot like exactly what we want this thing to do. So for target, we're going to select the curve that we just made. In this case, it's Bezier 5. And it makes the, the empty go off somewhere else. So from this overhead view, I'm going to drag the empty back. And it's also up a little bit higher. I'm going to drag it down as well, get it relatively in our starting point, rotate it a little bit, and then you change this offset value, and the offset value is what moves our empty along our curve. So there we go, we have an object following a curve, which is a great step one and a great start. And then make sure to select follow curve here. And what follow curve does is it makes it actually like turn so the front is facing the right direction, which is gonna be super helpful once our camera is attached to this empty. So we can set this back to zero, and then if something weird happens and it's like not following the path the right way or it's following the path but it's off or it's backwards, you can play around with these forward axis settings and see if any of that fixes it. You can also play around with trying the curve the opposite way, and I don't know why this is. It seems like there's a certain side of the curve that it wants this to work from, so if it's not working from one end, you can try it from the other end or just start over from the other end, but that is a potential like troubleshooting way to fix an issue if you're having a problem with this. Now we're going to add a camera and parrot the camera to our empty. So add camera, once again, unsurprisingly, shows up in the middle, drag it over, lift it up so we can see it, spin it around, lift it up. So once we get it in the same position as our empty, I and mean, we also want it to be this little point where it's starting from. Once we get the camera in position with our empty, we're selecting the camera first, then we're selecting the empty, then we're pressing Control P and setting parent to object. So now, when we go to these constraint settings and we change the object, object, so when we go to these constraint settings and we change the offset, the whole thing moves. And that's exactly what we want. So now we can keyframe this thing in so it does this movement on its own without us moving this slider here. And if you're familiar with keyframes in Blender in general, this works the way that you think it works. I'm gonna walk you through it anyway. So if we're saying that this animation is going from frame one to frame 500, frame zero to frame 100, we're going to set this off to zero and offset first. We're going to click this little dot on the side for animate property, that turns it yellow, that creates a keyframe and the keyframes show up here when you are selecting that empty object. Then, where you want this to end, and I would say I don't want it to end exactly at the end of the animation, let's say I want it to end at frame 400, then at frame 400, we look over here and see what value is the end of our animation. So that would be almost like 100, something like that. Whatever that value is, press that diamond again, it turns that value yellow, and now when you play, don't forget to save. So when you play back this animation, it follows the curve. And again, I'm just making sure that some of these points are really, really close to the table because that gives us this cool effect that we're looking for from the probe lens. You can also rotate the camera and things like that later as well. And yeah, any changes that you make to the curve at this point will also still affect and it'll update correctly. Another little tip here is to change your Bezier resolution. So the resolution by default is 12. And when it's 12, you can kind of see you're getting like straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, which is cool. And that is part of how curves work. And that's what makes them versatile and easy to work with. But if you change that to something like 30 or 34, you can see, you can even just slide it back and forth. You can see how it smooths that out. And as it smooths that out, that's going to give you that smooth camera motion as it moves along those planes. Then before this is going to make too much sense when we play it back, there are also some camera settings that help a lot here. So camera focal length, in real life, the focal length of this lens is like 24, and maybe there's something like a 14 that exists. And depending on the way your scale is set up inside of your Blender project, this focal length can have different effects. So it's not always like, Typing 24 in here makes it feel exactly like a real 24 millimeter lens. So I found that I like 20 
the way that this scene is set up, the way that it feels, just feels like 20 works. So you can see that difference here. 50 is the default, which is not really how this lens works. 24, technically, mathematically is how it works. I like 20. So another very, very, very important setting for getting this effect to look correct and to feel right, we need to change our lens clip settings. And I know we're used to changing the clipping settings in here in view, but there's a separate set of similar settings per our camera and it's really important that you change the clip start for example when we're up here in the french fries there's a point where we start to just see inside of some of these objects if we change our clip start from 0 0.1 to 0 0.01 so now we can get up nice and close to our objects without them getting clipped out or cut off once we get too close very important so another feature of these lenses in real life is that they have a little ring light almost on the very front of the lens because you're in such tight little spots that sometimes there's not another way to really get light in there right up close in front of the lens. Either the lens is blocking your light, it's casting its own shadow, or it's just that close up to something. So you can also recreate this in Blender and lend a little bit of that real life feature to it as well. So we're adding an area light, add light, area, you know, move it, rotate it around and get it basically right where the camera is. And you want it kind of pointing in that same general vicinity. And then we are parenting this area light to the camera. So, so we're selecting the light, then holding shift, selecting the camera, pressing control P, set parent to object, boom. So now when we play our animation, the camera, the empty and the light I have the light set to five because the smaller it gets, it starts to really concentrate that light and really have the effect of being brighter when it's smaller and more concentrated. So I have it set to five. That's sort of what has worked out for me. And you can see this is with that light. This is without the light. With, without, with, without. I don't know, not that crazy, but it's a little touch and it depends on the situation. Also here are my camera depth of field settings. Click on your camera, enable depth of field. And these are my settings right here. I have a focal distance of 1.4 and a super unrealistically shallow f-stop, but that was giving me the effect that I wanted. And this is my final result. Now you can make a cool pro blend shot like this inside a blender. Let me know what you think. I always appreciate the likes. I appreciate the comments. Let me know if you want to see more content like this. Thank you as always, and I'll catch you next time.